always, sometimes, never. If we have two vectors, x and y, that are not zero, and theta is the angle between these vectors, is it always, sometimes, or never true that the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of x with y divided by the length of x times the length of y? I would think that it's always true, partially because of the hints that we were given. I would assume that meant those hints were to help me prove it. So let's see if we can do it. So first of all, we know that x and y are non-zero vectors, and they, the angle between them is theta. So I'm going to draw a triangle by creating another vector for the third side of the triangle, like such. Now, notice that vector x plus this new vector actually results in vector y if we add them, which means this new vector must be y minus x. Now, the hint was to use the law of cosines, so I need to figure out or remember what the law of cosines actually is. I looked it up in Wikipedia just to make sure that I could remember it. The idea is if we think of the vector opposite theta as having length c and the vector x as having length a and y as having length b, the law of cosines says that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine theta. So actually it's just an extension of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see if we can prove things now. We're going to let x and y be arbitrary vectors as usual. And we have our little picture here. From the law of cosines, what do we know? We know that the length of y minus x squared is the length of x squared plus the length of y squared minus 2 times the length of x times the length of y times the cosine of theta. So, what do we know about the length squared? It's actually just the dot product. So, the length of y minus x squared is actually the dot product of y minus x with itself. The length of x squared is the dot product of x with itself. Similarly, the length of y squared is the dot product of y with itself, and we end up with this expression. Just by squaring the lengths. Now, from one of our homework, we actually looked at y plus x transpose times y plus x. This is slightly different, and I'll call it a lemma. But using the same type of proof, and I'm going to encourage you to, to uh, make sure that it actually does work, I'm going to claim that this expands to y transpose y minus 2 y transpose x plus x transpose x is equal to x transpose x plus y transpose y minus 2 times the length of x times the length of y times the cosine of theta. And I'm going to justify that with 
a lemma, which is an extension of homework. And I'm going to ask you to, to make sure that this is true. Now, by algebra, I can actually simplify this equation. I can subtract y transpose y and x transpose x from each side, which yields minus 2 times y transpose x is equal to minus 2 times the length of x times the length of y times the cosine of theta. That's just algebra. Similarly now, I can simplify this equation and say multiplying both sides by negative 1 half and exchanging the left and right hand side, this yields the length of x times the length of y times the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of y with x. Again, that's just algebra. But using some algebra and dividing both sides by the length, and also noticing that if we recall, the dot product was commutative. So the dot product of y with x is equivalent to the dot product of x with y. We find that the cosine of theta must be x transpose y by commutivity of dot product divided by the length of x times the length of y. So that was algebra. And uh, dot product being commutative. So we're done. And we have proven that this is always true.